it's a dog. I came across um, a jet black, um, yeah, what is it called? Uh, Jet black, uh, but I, uh, you know German. Yeah. You know German Eichhörnchen. It's a, it's a, uh, a little creature which climbs up the trees and jumps from one branch to the other. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, yes mm -hmm. they are they have a long tail. Yeah, yes. brown. Mm -hmm. And they climb up the trees. Mm -hmm. the, well, I never saw a black one. The the local ones they are grey. Yeah. But this one was jet black. No. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. I've never seen that before. In Sweden they are brown. Yeah. Brownie. Yeah. Huh. And so you get in nature you get those uh, uh, those freaks, but they extremely yellow color. It's a uh, it's derived from a cross between the black be Western European, be anti-Italian. Mm. Yeah. If you cross the Cyprian bee, you get a, you get an orange. You see, you mm. don't get the yellow. Mm -hmm. mm. I just want to ask you not to say mm after everything. Mm. You see, the whole, uh, the whole uh, Middle East uh, group of phrases. They are not yellow, they are orange. You see, the, the Egyptian bee is orange. The, the, uh, the Syrian is orange. And the Cyprus bee is also orange. Mm. Um, um, well, I've never seen any, in any, in any, by anybody else, making that differentiation, you see, between between yellow and orange, you see, but it's a desire, it's a, the two distinct colors, two distinct colors. Those you brought in from the, the oasis in uh, North Africa? Yes. Were they orange? Uh, well, uh, now those are the Sariensis, it seems a mixture. You get, uh, you get a different, you get some bees that are quite dark, and then you get the orange also, you see. Actually, I don't maybe I'm thinking they, you'll find that in the new book, you see. The, um, the uh, Sariensis is a, it's a, a branch of the, um, of the um, Adansona. Yes. You mm. see, 10,000 or 12,000 years ago, the Sahara was as green as Mm. This, most of the Sahara was fertile, you see, and uh, the Adansona came right up to Morocco. Mm. And then when the dry period started, you see, the Adansona retreated and left us a few relics in the, in the oasis. What year was it you brought in the Saharansis? I first brought it in in 60, 62. And is there anything left of them now? Uh, well, yes, I had a breeder. Uh, this year, and I wanted to breed from her, and I put her into one of the small nuclei by the home apiary. And then, then she says she stopped playing. I couldn't get any eggs. And then after about 10 days, she disappeared, you see. So I lost them, you see. Really? Yes, I lost them. Mm. But mm -hmm. Have you got the the genetical material preserved in uh, any oh, sisters? Oh yes, it's still about, you see. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't got a, a direct uh, line of the Sariensis at the moment. How d how do you keep them divided into? I mean, are there Sahariensis in certain apiaries? No, they are not kept in special apiaries, as I told you this morning. Uh, every line or every cross, we keep a few queens in each apiary, you see, to get the reliable comparative results. You see. We don't keep, uh, say, a certain cross in one apiary and another cross in another apiary. No. No. Yeah. No, I see why you do it, yeah. but uh, in the same time, I, I to myself, Yes. It would be nice to have 
each thing at its place to to make it easier for yourself. Oh yeah, make it easier, <laughs> yes. But on the other hand, you don't get the uh, the positive results as oh. we do with our system. No, that's true. Mm. Mm. Well, this Saharianis was it that important that you you will try to get? Well, no. You see, we have so much. Um, well, different uh, breeding material. You say uh, you don't want. Uh, you say you don't want to uh, to extend it too much. You see, as mm. they say, if you run after too many hairs, you mm. won't catch one. No. And it's the same in beekeeping. You see, yeah, and sure. the limitations. You say mm. I have only a certain number of hives. You say, and a certain number of nuclei. You say, if I disperse my efforts too much, then I won't achieve anything. Mm. Now one can tell from the view here that there are many enough. Oh yes. Yes. Mm. You see, and I mean now, for instance, uh, well, the Ebrees, they went the far, that's from 51 to 75. And then the middle one is from 76 to 100. The 100 is right up here. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, but now again, you say, for instance, this year, it begins. It börjar här i alla fall. Jag tycker du ska förklara för mig hur du tänker. Ja. Och jag, hur, hur jag vill ha det. Det blåser alltså rätt ordentligt här. Ja, vi kanske ska prata först då. And, uh, and why you started? Well, I mean, you mean the breeding work? Yeah, not only the breeding work. Uh, as a beekeeper. As oh, beekeeping. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that was really quite accidental, you say. I came to breakfast in 1910. I always was interested in beekeeping, you see, and bees. But I had nothing really directly to do with the bees until 19 March 1915. Because I fell ill, and then the abbot thought that perhaps beekeeping was the things, you see, the fresh air and so forth, and that's how I came to... And then, of course, when I read at once all the books I could get hold of. You, you kept bees? You had contact with bees even in well, South Germany? We kept Germany? bees. There were bees at Buckfast already. You see, when the monks bought the property in 1982. In, 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 in 1882, you see. And yeah, but uh, I, I meant uh, when you were a boy. Pardon? When you were a boy. Yes. You had contact with bees already then? Yes, yes. yes. In uh, southern Germany? Yes, yes. Mm. yes. And that's how it came. And then, of course, in 1915, there was the Isle of Wight epidemic, the Sakharin epidemic. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, the winter of 1915-16, uh, we lost uh, uh, we lost uh, 46 colonists. We had only still 16 left in the following spring, you see, and those were mainly Italian and Carniolian, you see, and then of course it was a question. We realized that the native bee was uh, highly susceptible to acrin, and then of course we started the breeding work. It, it's all, it all developed, so to say. Uh, 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 why did you decide to start the breeding work? Because well, to breed a bee that is resistant to this uh, disease, you see, occurring. Yes, I, I, I understand that, but uh, I suppose most of the beekeeper in England yes. stand, stood in the, in the same position. Uh, what to do now? Yes. And you started to, yes, to, bre yes, to breed. Yes. Yes. There must be another, some, some more reasons. Yes, well, this, this was the primary reason, because we felt that you couldn't keep bees unless you had a bee that was uh, largely resistant. Mm. You mm. See, the old native bee, but they all died. You see, the and you were so interested that you yes, wanted to yes. keep on. And then gradually, you see, and then we had one colony which was a cross between the native 
native drones and Italian winds that was did outstandingly well, you say. And we prayed from that, but it took us many years till we had eliminated the susceptibility to alcohol. Mm -hmm. mm. So you, you started with, with material from uh, your own bee yard? Yes. When, started you, when, when did you start to go abroad to find other bee races? Well, Loretta, that was an, well, already before I had anything to do, we, um, we had here uh, carnelians, you see, what they call carnica. And we had also some other races, you see, we did, there was some experimenting done, you see, but it wasn't done well on, um, on a scientific basis, you see, then that gradually, gradually was developed. And then I, bought, I imported the first Cyprian queens in 1920. Mm -hmm. you see. But the actual big work was done. And then, yes, well, in 1930, I imported some French uh, queens, you see. And at one time, I had a hundred French colonies. Why, why did you choose the French? Pardon? Why did you choose the French? Well, the French was they said, the, the fashion in those days. You see, after the First World War, they imported queens from, uh, from ho I mean, bees from Holland and France and Switzerland, and those were all black bees. And the uh, French bee had certain characteristics. I mean, it was a very good honey cutter. So the cutter it was uh, a very aggressive, you see. But a very good honey gatherer. It swarmed a lot, well, like very much like the uh, like the Swedish bee, except this. I think the French bee was uh, more prolific than the Swedish bee. I tried all the Swedish bee. I had some queens up there on top, and I found they built up in spring very rapidly. But once they had a certain colony strength, then they wanted to swarm. But one can say that the French, the old English, and the Scandinavian bees are from all the same. Yeah, place. it's a group of races. Yes. I I call it. Uh, well, you haven't got. Of course, this book has never been translated. Uh, the the book I wrote in search of the best strains, yes. but that was never yes. translated. Into no, but we know it's still. Yeah. And there you get all those different. Uh, and there, of course, I mean, the, you see there again, it's my discovery, the, uh, the Western European uh, races, group of races, uh, 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 really came out of the North African bee. Mm. The North African bee has got all the characteristics, or the Western European has all the characteristics of the North African bee. Mm. And also the, all the faults, the effects, and you get them in Sweden, just the same. You see, the, the Swedish bee is highly susceptible to brood diseases. Mm. You, see. you get that right through the Western Europe. You see, now the Carniolan bee is the other way around. It's, uh, it's a very great risk in, in, in the Balkan Peninsula. You find very little fowl brood because there it's all the Carniolan bee. Were you influenced of Mendel? Pardon? Were you influenced by of Mendel? Well, yes, of course, yes, yes. And there is this book, you see, which was first by Professor Armbruster. He wrote a book in 1919 on the genetics of the honeybee. But then, of course, naturally he came to wrong conclusions in some respect because he didn't know anything about multiple mating. You see, he didn't know anything about multiple mate. He also thought that a queen got made by one, the one drone only, you see. With the result that all his conclusions were wrong. I have a great many. Mm -hmm. And you get that, uh, those corrections in the new book. Yes, yes, yeah. sure. Don't say hmm all the time because it's very irritating for the listeners. Mm. Just, just nod, it's all right. 
They always say, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> And it's very irritating for the radio yes, listeners. Yes, but the You heard that before? Oh, you haven't heard it? Oh yes, that's how. And then, of course, Croce, 1925, I established, I felt there was a need of a mating, controlled mating. You cannot do anything in the way of breeding unless you have control of the male and female. You see. And uh, then we established this, I uh, found this place in 1925, you see. And since then, we have been doing, for instance, I knew already about the uh, uh, the results of inbreeding, the risks, you see, already in 1928, 29, you see, because, well, the idea was, you see, the Swiss Dr. Kramer, he, he said, well, he wanted to get his best queens made to the best thrones, you see. And, of course, you can only fix those guys by inbreeding. And, uh, and so, of course, I inbreed too, but as soon so that you couldn't get very far. When you started, uh, um, what was your um, thoughts? What did you think that you were going when you started breeding? Well, in the breeding at first, it was to breed for resistance to acrine, you see, because this was the great threat to beekeeping, you see. Unless you had a bee that was resistant uh, to acrin, you see, because acrin was so devastating. You see, it's now very much like this pharmamite, you, mm -hmm. you see. It's the same, uh, the same sort of... Uh, and so, and this was a, uh, uh, primarily the essential. You aimed that high already from the beginning? But you aimed that high already from the beginning? Yes, yes. Then, of course, they had the thing, uh, the honey gathering abilities and uh, a good temper and all that came gradually, you mm. see. Those uh, developments didn't come overnight. No, they when, when did you get your first stage. result? Yeah. When did you get your first result? Well, the first the results were in the case of this. Uh, you may say in the case of this cross between the, f uh, the Austrian and the French bee. You see, that's in 19, uh, 1935, before the last war. How was that bee? When? How was that bee? How? How was it? Well, of course, the French bee was extremely aggressive, you see. But you, cro and you crossed it with this? Yes. And how, how was the result? Well, the result uh, there again, you see, the first cross was of no value. It, it, you only got the results and the subject.